Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, saints. Praise God. The Lord is great, greatly to be praised, and we must worship him in spirit and truth. Truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I praise you today, and I thank you for this opportunity to serve you and to minister unto you, Lord, by ministering to your people. Father, we pray that your word, Lord, would begin to grow even more, bearing the fruit of the Spirit in truth and love in the hearts of your children. Lord, that you would bring the unity, Jesus, that you prayed for, the unity of one mind and one soul in your body. Hallelujah. And that your people would be grounded on the rock, Christ Jesus, and his holy word, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray you break down and crush every untempered wall, every wall, Lord, of untempered mortar, the false teachings that permeate the body of Christ, that you would crush, Lord, every wall of untempered mortar, Lord. Pull them down, O oh God, today. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about, or a lot, about truth, because truth is so vitally important. Truth is where the controversy is at in the earth today. It's with truth. Now, we know the whole world is founded upon a lie, okay? I mean, it is the whole world system that we were born into, and our fathers, and our grandfathers, and our great-grandfathers, all the way back to the fall, okay? It's all based upon deception, lies, and people have a real problem with truth and with the truth. Hallelujah. Okay, and I say truth as being something that is true, something that is real, something that is absolutely a fact. And I say the truth, the person, the man at the Father's right hand, the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. He is the way the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Oh, praise his holy name, saints. Now, this is very important today because we are entering in, we are in, we are in a time. I shouldn't say entering in because we are in the time. <clears throat> we are in the time of great battle between heavenly forces. Hallelujah. And on our side, on the truth side, there are twice as many forces fighting against the false side, which is the lie side. Okay, So we have to remember that. Let us keep that in the forefront of our mind, that, that we are the winners. Hallelujah. We, we are the ones who have the victory because we stand in the truth. Okay. Now, when you hear a lot of... Uh, the people in the alternative media, they talk about, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But they leave out the part where it says, if ye continue in my word, okay, the Holy Scriptures, the person, the Lord Jesus Christ, if you continue in my word, that means his word, the written word and the living word, hallelujah, then are ye my disciples indeed then you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So many of these truthers out there, they're not continuing in the word. They are not Jesus Christ's disciple. They are disciples of the lie, and they'll use the truth to get what they want. That's what the devil does too. The devil will use the truth to try to get what he wants. And what he wants is he wants division. He wants a people who are weak, a people who, and I don't mean weak like, uh, the, because the Bible says when we are weak, then are we strong. Then Christ can be strong in us. I'm talking about a people who are not prayed up, a people who are just relying upon feeling and emotion, okay? And as long as feeling and emotion are good, everything's fine to them, but they're really on a really slippery slope down into the pit of hell, 
okay, or down the side of that mountain into the river Styx, and they're going to be whisked off to hell because they do not hold to the truth. You know, there's a lot of people out in the world today who are real. When you look at their life, you know, they look like good moral people, and they do lots of good works, and they do lots of nice things for people, for their families. But, you know, when you come and you take the sword of truth, the Holy Bible, the Scripture, the Word of God, the truth, that all men, all of our righteousness is like filthy rags before the Lord. When you take that sword in and you bring it to bear in their life, you see the wickedness of a fallen man manifest before your eyes. In many, many, many cases, multitudes of cases. Just that, that total wickedness of fallen man, that rebellion, the pride, the arrogance, the haughtiness will rise up. And you go, what happened to all your goodness? See? See, there's, there's, they want tolerance in the world. But the Lord our God, he is not tolerant with evil. He is not tolerant with sin. Okay? He commands us to keep his commandments. Hallelujah. And he tells us to love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Hallelujah. See, that, that fulfills the law and the prophets. So, okay, so let's throw out the law and the prophets, and let's just love God. And I can say with my lips, I love you, God. I love you, God. But my heart can be far from God, and I don't want that. See, so that's why I love the law and the prophets, and that's why I read the law and the prophets, because I want to see if I'm keeping his commands, and loving him in a true and in a pure and a holy way. See? And that's why as teachers and as preachers and as, as prophets and as evangelists, okay, and as pastors and apostles, we must feed the sheep the truth so that they know when they are not loving God properly. See? It's the whole counsel of God that we must have. Now, in the Bible, the word truth is very, very prevalent because the Lord our God, he is the truth. He is the truth. The Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Now, in John 14, 17, now in John 14, first of all, let me give you this, uh, these numbers here. In the New Testament, truth is used 119 times, okay? And love is used 180 times. Uh, faith is 245 times. Trust is 27 times. Hope is 61 times. Okay, John's epistles. In John's epistles, that's 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Just as epistles, truth is used 21 times. And in the gospel, it's used 27 times more than any other gospel. Okay, the word truth is used. Hallelujah. John uses the word truth 27 times in his gospel. So 48 times total in, in John's epistles and, and also his gospel. The word love is used 22 times in John's gospel. Okay. And John's epistle, love is used 38 times. So we, we can see in John's gospel, he uses the word truth 27 times and love 22 times. Okay. And then, so in John's epistle, love is used 38 times. Okay, Paul uses the word love 78 times in all of his epistles. That's Romans through Hebrews. Okay, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the word love is used in those three gospels 29 times. Okay, 29 times. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 17, let me read verse uh, 16. I'll start at verse 15. Hallelujah. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth. Oh, hallelujah, saints. The Spirit of truth. Whom the world, the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. The world has to see. 
neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. And then verse 18, Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Oh, hallelujah. And he comes to us, saints, with the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. Now in John 15, verse 26, Jesus is speaking again. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. He shall testify of me. Oh, praise God. Our God's a great God. Hallelujah. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. See? And we've been with the Lord. We've been in the Lord from the beginning, saints. He chose us before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. That we might be holy and blameless in his sight by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Now, the importance of truth as truth is always <clears throat> with love. Hallelujah. Love and truth go together. God's love and the word and, and God's truth are together. They're, they're, they're like this. You can't separate them. If you're loving somebody with God's love, you are speaking the truth to them. Okay? You are listening to the promptings of the Holy Ghost and you are speaking the truth to them because you love them. See? Jesus came in John 18. It says, I came to bear witness unto the truth, all right? He didn't say he came to bear witness unto the love. His life was love. His life was love. And, and because of that love that he is, because the Father so loved the world, he sent forth his Son to die for us, and he showed it in truth, hallelujah. And he bore witness unto the truth that men are fallen, that men need a Savior. And I am the Savior, he said. I am the Savior. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the Messiah. Before Abraham was, I am. He told the woman at the well, she said, I, I hear that Messiah is coming. And Jesus said to her, in the original, it, he would say, it. he said, I am who am speaking to you. See, I am who am speaking to you. He told the poor, the poor blind guy, he said, do you believe in the Son of God? And, and he said, who is he, Lord, that I might believe? And he said, I am who am speaking to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That love that he is, is, is intertwined. It is one with his truth. Hallelujah. In John, 2 John, I, I did a study on 2 John and 3 John, and these are two small books right after 1 John in the back of the Bible there, right before Reve Jude and Revelation. And John says, The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love. Hallelujah. In the truth. Whom I love. In the truth. You see. Look how important truth is. I want to show you this right here. I got to get over to my other version. Because I have. There it is. Okay. The elder unto the elect lady and her children. Whom I love. Whom I love. In the truth. And not I only. But also all they that have known. The truth. See. If you know the truth. You will be loving correctly. See. Hallelujah, hallelujah, for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Now that's one sentence. The elder unto the elect lady and her children whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. John is putting great emphasis on truth. Because we, we look at the Apostle John and people say he was the love apostle. Love. He was the truth apostle. Hallelujah. He spoke the truth. Hallelujah. And he loved. Hallelujah. Grace be with you. Mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Son of the Father in truth and love. Hallelujah. See, truth and love are together. 
So if we want to throw out some of the truth that God has written to us, we, we, we will be in danger. We will be in danger. We cannot do that. Hallelujah. See, all the moral principles, all the, the moral, the morality of God's law is still in effect today. Hallelujah. It's very much in effect. And you gain much blessing by believing God's law and by, by studying God's law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It makes you a better Christian to know his word. Hallelujah. See, his word is his law. His, his holy word is, is all of his law. I mean, he will not violate his word. He will not violate the principles therein. Oh, the method. He'll change his method. But he, not the principle. Not the principle. Hallelujah. In other words... His method with the Apostle Paul was to knock him down and blind him with a blinding light. But his method with someone else might be different. And it is different. There's so many different methods. But the fact is, the principle is, he revealed himself to Paul. Hallelujah. See? And he revealed himself to me. And he revealed himself to my wife. He revealed himself to you. That is the key. And when he did that... That brought us to repentance, hallelujah, because we saw his holiness, his beauty, his righteousness, and it revealed the fact that we were fallen sinners going to hell, and we cried out repentance, oh, we repented, we cried out, Lord, save me, hallelujah, hallelujah, so his method will change, but not his principle, the principle is, he says, I am the Lord God Almighty, I am holy, see, and he says, you must be holy. But there's no way for you to be holy. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to become a man. I'm going to show you how to walk the walk. I'm going to show you how to die daily. I'm going to teach you how to lay down your life and pick up your cross and follow me. Hallelujah. See, he did all the work and he does all the work in us and through us. Hallelujah. See, that's why we know that we're going to make it to the end because he is in us doing the work. And we submit to him. We cooperate. We work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We die daily. We submit to God. Resist the devil. Watch the devil flee. Hallelujah. See, we have all power and authority. All dominion, saints. We have it today. We, we need to get this deep in our conscience and our mind. Hallelujah. That we are the overcomers. Hallelujah. John wrote in 1 John chapter 2, we have overcome the wicked one. Hallelujah. We have overcome that wicked one. Not, and a lot of times people say, you got to be an overcomer. We are overcomers. Hallelujah. See? And when you walk with that attitude, then when the devil comes along with his stinking, filthy, lying mouth, okay, and he tries to tempt you into doing something that you know is against God's law, you know it's against love, you know it's against the truth, you know it's not what God is pleased with, then you know you are an overcomer. You say, no, devil. You submit to God. You say, Father, I submit to you. Lord, I see this temptation. It's just dogging me down. Lord, help me, help me, help me. And you submit to God. You cry out to God for his grace and for his mercy and for his truth. Hallelujah. And then he comes in, see, and he fills you. And he gives you the power to resist the devil. You say, get out of here, Satan. I rebuke you. And then you march forward and you conquer, wielding the weapons of righteousness on the right hand and on the left hand. Hallelujah. We have the power, saints, in this wicked world. We are the ones in the ascendancy. We are the ones with the power of God residing in us, filling us. Hallelujah. The fire of God, the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, and the world in all of its lies will not stand, will not stand up to that truth. They will fall. They will crumble. Hallelujah. At the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 4 of 2 John 1. John says, I rejoiced greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth. Hallelujah. He didn't say love. He said truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. Now, John's not leaving love out. J love is a, is a known thing to, 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 to the early church. I mean, they loved each other, okay? They really did. All right? It, it's something that's really foreign today because, I mean, and I'm talking about the true agape love of God. See? Not the feel love. See? The world's love is based on feeling. It's based on feeling. And that's what the false gospel is. 
love gospel. Just make sure you feel good and make them feel good. I mean, we we the love gospel, they say, we'll love them into the kingdom. No, you won't. You won't love anybody into the kingdom except the kingdom of darkness where you can control them, where you can suck life out of them for your own demonic purposes. That's the love gospel. Jesus Christ, his gospel, his love demands that we die, demands that we come to the cross and die. See, his love and his truth are one. And he, the, the truth is that we are all fallen from grace until we get saved. When we get saved, then we're restored. See, we get a new nature. It's Christ Jesus in us. Hallelujah. See, we're restored. Hallelujah. We're renewed. We're resurrected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the resurrection life of Christ in us. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ told Martha, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. So when he comes inside, that resurrection is in us. Hallelujah. We walk in the power, saints. We walk with the authority of God. And he's going to be calling on us to wield that authority more and more and more. And it's the truth. People can't stand up to the truth. No, they will not stand up. They will run, or they will try to kill you, or they will slander you, or lie about you, anything to dog down the truth, okay? But we must persevere, and we will, because Jesus Christ persevered. He made it all the way to the end. Do you know every step of his life was ordered of the Father? Do you know that, saints? And every step of your life, and my life, my wife's life, we have a life together, me and Sharon. Our, our life is, is ordered of the Father, hallelujah. What do we have to fear? Nothing. See, the devil's a liar. He'll tell you to fear. He'll try to put fear on you. Don't receive it. All the stuff coming down in the world, hey, this is God's manifestation. God is manifesting his victory over Satan. Hallelujah. Oh, he's manifesting his thing. Hallelujah. John, verse 4 again, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. Hallelujah. And now I beseech thee, lady, he says, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And this is love. This is love, John says, that we walk after his commandments. See, his commandments, plural. God has many commandments, many principles laid down that we need to know and we need to walk after those. Hallelujah. And it begins with truth and love. Hallelujah. Together, see. Truth and love. The spirit of truth. That's who Jesus sent to us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, praise God. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Hallelujah. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. They deny his deity. They want to just take him a little bit off the throne. They want to just make him, you know, like the fathers, you know, here. And then Jesus is here, you know, like this. And then the Holy Ghost is down here, I guess. That, that's what they want to do. But the Father says, no, they are one. See, they are one God. Hallelujah. And Jesus is right next to the Father. The Father's given given all authority to his Son. And his Son, he turns around and gives it all back to the Father. And the Holy Ghost is right there working with him. Hallelujah. See, and the Holy Ghost, he comes to exalt the Son. And the Father, he exalts his Son. And Jesus turns around and exalts the Father. See, because they're one God. Hallelujah. See, hallelujah. Oh, praise God, saints. Hallelujah. Look to yourselves, John says, verse 8, 2 John, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Hallelujah. We got to guard it, saints. Hallelujah. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. They don't have God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Are any of you, are you communicating with people and kind of fellowshipping with people that don't have the proper doctrine? You are going to partake of their evil deeds. Okay? We have to be careful we don't do that. Hallelujah. But we must witness to the loss, okay? Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I must, but I trust to come to you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. And then in John, in 3 John, here he goes again. John says, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. See, I love in the truth. You hear people saying that a lot? Oh, I love you, brother, in the truth. You know, that'd be a good saying, wouldn't it? Huh? Because it's the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the word of God. John said, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth. They didn't testify of the love of Gaius, but of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. Hallelujah. See? Hallelujah. God wants you to, to get this. He wants us to get this. It's very important. And there's so much in these in these little books I, we could bring out. And we, we, we will. We'll bring it out. But right now, God wants to zero in on this word truth. Because it's so vitally important that we have the truth when we're saying we're loving people. Okay? It's very important. I have no greater joy. Listen to the Apostle John here. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm in 3 John 1, 4, verse 4. It's only one chapter. 3 John, verse 4. And he's used the word truth four times already. Hallelujah. It's important, saints. The spirit of truth is speaking. Hallelujah. Beloved, thou doest faithfully, verse 5, whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom, if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Hallelujah. Because that for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. See, we have to receive those who are walking in the truth. And we have to be mindful. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth will show us when people are just, if, if, we, if we see people, especially young babes in Christ, and they can be of any age, they come into the Lord and they don't know. They're ignorant. They, they, they're not schooled in the scripture. They don't understand. We have to be very sensitive in the spirit. Very sensitive. Because these are little ones. We have to be very careful that we do not trounce on them and push them down because they might say something that we know is not a proper understanding. We have to be so careful, saints. God wants us to instruct. Jesus doesn't take a lamb and, and start beating on the lamb, you know, to try to, 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 to instruct it. No. Jesus speaks the truth. And when people have the true spirit of God, their spirit will bear witness unto the truth. Hallelujah. And if repentance is in order, it will be given by God and the people will repent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let us be fellow helpers to the truth. Let us help our brothers and sisters, saints. Hallelujah. Verse 9. I wrote unto the church but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us, receiveth us not. Now sometimes, you see, Diotrephes was a false believer. He was someone who was trying to take the lead and be the man, see. And there's many people out there who profess Jesus Christ who are doing the same thing. 
and they will not receive the truth. See, John wrote to give them the truth, and they did not receive it. Diotrephes and his clan didn't receive the truth. Because why? They are not of the truth. And how many of us have warned the false believers here on YouTube and around the world to receive the truth, and they do not receive it. Why? Because they are not of the truth. And the Father says, let them alone. Let them alone. See? Let them go. They're not of me. Hallelujah. Verse 10, Wherefore, John says, If I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words. This is what happens to the truth. Okay? When you're walking in the truth, this is what happens to you. It happened to John. Look, wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Demetrius hath good report of all men, and of the truth itself. Hallelujah. Yea, and we also bear record, and ye know that our record is true. Hallelujah. I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. But I trust I shall shortly see thee, and sh we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee. Our friends salute thee. Greet the friends by name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this word today, Lord. And the Lord would have you understand that as we see all the events of the world that will unfold, that God will allow us to see, okay, that God wants us to know. We need not fear, saints. We need to stand in the truth, speak the truth, and let the Lord do the work. Hallelujah. Because his truth is a mighty sword. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It will go in and divide asunder between the joint and the marrow and the soul and the spirit. It will reveal the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And we must allow him to do his work in our lives and in the lives of his people. And we must preach the gospel to those around us. We must be obedient to share the love, the mercy, the grace, the truth, all of the virtues and all of who Christ is. Hallelujah. Because that fake false love will kill you. We've seen it happen. It's a murderer. It's, it's of the devil. It's false love. It's just based on feeling and emotion. And God's love, agape love, is an action verb. It, it, is, a, it is an awesome, I mean, it is God himself. God is love. And you know God is a God of action. Oh, you'll have the, the feeling, you'll have the emotion. I mean, God can touch you. One time, Sharon and I, we were uh, hugging each other when we lived in a trailer over in Oklahoma City after we got married. And I just prayed. I said, Lord, I pray that you just put one drop of your love upon us, Lord. And we both felt like a raindrop hit the top of our heads. And we, I mean, it nearly floored us to the ground. Because God's love is so powerful. But it must come to us in the truth. It doesn't come any other way. Jesus came to bear witness unto the truth. And all, all who belong to him will hear the truth. And then they will respond according to the way the Father says. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, I thank you for this word, Lord. I pray, Father, that it will touch the hearts of your people. That you would remind us, O oh God, that we must walk in truth and in love and in mercy and grace. All the fruit of the Spirit. O oh God, that we would look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Unto you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you would crush every demonic force that would try to steal the seed of this word, the word planted in the heart of your people. 
Lord, I pray that it bring forth much fruit unto righteousness and holiness in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name.